on the screen I've got a loop grid and I've got a taxonomy filter. I'm going to click this to expand the parents to show me the children and I can do it to the color and the transmission as well. And I'm going to go and click the blue and that will now filter down to just a blue relevant post. And maybe I want to go for manual and maybe, well, watch this. I'm going to go Ferrari. Nothing appears because there is nothing that satisfies that criteria. But if I went for Toyota, one post appears and I can unclick them to deactivate them. Or I could just hit reset filters and it kind of took away all of them. This was done with one taxonomy filter widget and obviously elemental loop grid. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Well, actually, first, let me explain why this is useful. You may have many like custom taxonomies or you may be just using one category. You may have tags as well. And when you're building out your loop grid, you're going to go and drop in your taxonomy filter. Even though you can enable multiple selection, when you have lots of taxonomy filters, so they're completely separate filter widgets. They don't talk to one another. So let's say this was a taxonomy filter all on its own and I go and click BMW. And then there is another separate taxonomy filter and I go and click blue, it ain't going to talk to one another. So this one satisfies both requirements, blue and BMW. This is where you've got to think outside the box. And we've got seven example posts and you can see their categories. I'm doing everything inside of the post categories. I don't have loads of different taxonomies here because the trick I'm going to show you allows you to have the multiple selection and you can pick and mix what you want by using one category. So seven example posts and here are the categories. So I've got bike, brand, color and transmission. These are my parent categories, okay? The way you know it's a parent because it don't have the hyphen. When you have the hyphen, it means it's now a subcategory or a child of a parent. Now, for every time you have a parent, you need to make sure the slug has the word parent hyphen at the beginning. Don't worry when you're viewing it on the taxonomy filter, um, or when you're actually viewing it on, say, a loop grid or a post info, you will see the name. You won't see the slug bit. That's just behind the scenes and the side of the HTML and the CSS. So if we go to bike, can you see it says parent hyphen bike? You go to brand, it's going to say parent hyphen brand. Now, when you get to the children, you can see here, you've got to have child hyphen. So if it's a subcategory or a child, you've got to have child hyphen. Then you need to put the name of the parent. So BMW is a child of the brand parent. So child brand BMW, child brand Ferrari, child brand Toyota. And you can see here where we have color and we got parent color. You need to then go for blue and red needs to be child color blue, child color red. I hope that makes sense. So it's a child uh, or parent at the start. And if it is a child, you then have to add in your parent name. Look at the examples on the screen. I hope that makes sense. This is really important for the JavaScript that we drop in the page to work. Let's now go and have a look at our loop grid. So we have a container and inside of that container, we've got a HTML script, which I will come on to in a moment. We've got a taxonomy filter and we've got the loop grid. This container is set to be a row. I've also added on wrap just so that I could get the HTML script to be a full 100%. And then obviously go and set the size of your filter and your loop grid in terms of, you know, your custom width, if you want to have them side by side. The loop grid, nothing fantastical going on there, except it is referring to the post. It's using a particular filter, columns free and shows items 12. There's nothing else going on. Uh, and in fact, even on the advanced tab, there's no CSS ID or any CSS classes. If we go down to custom CSS. There is again, nothing added into there. Just a standard loop grid. I've got the image, featured image, uh, title, and I'm showing you the post info just so you can see what categories parent or child were in play. A lot of the stuff does happen with the taxonomy filter though. So over here, it's applying to loop grid one. We're using the categories. In the settings, multiple selection is enabled. So if you don't have multiple selection enabled, it ain't gonna allow you to do what I was doing where I was going, okay, we'll have that color, we'll have that brand and we'll have that transmission or whatever. By the way, I have also got a category over here called bike that has no children. So this works whether you have children or not. OK, so you don't have to always have children, but it's not a bad idea to do that. And I will show you how within the code we've got this Chevron appearing when there are children and it automatically does not appear if there are no children. So this is super, super dope in what we're doing right now. Um, you can leave that as one. In, I don't know why the depth was on two there. Leave that as one. We're showing the taxonomy children. You don't want to show the children, take it off, but you can leave it on. 
And the first item we are also showing, which is this over here. Normally your first item title is gonna be all, but I've actually got it set to be reset filters. And I've also added a bit of styling into there to give it a bit of an underline and a different color as well. So this is another neat little trick, how you can use items provided to you within the elemental taxonomy filter to make this work for you. Because you could argue that looking at this, you might have thought it was another separate plugin or a funky huge amount of code. Yeah, there's a bit of code to make this work, but in terms of the visualize, visualize, in terms of visualization, okay, this is using what you get with the taxonomy filter. That's the layout. In terms of style, uh, all I've done is set the space between items to be zero because I'm gonna control all of that within the CSS that I'm gonna show you. Uh, in terms of the advanced tab, again, look, there's no CSS ID or CSS class applied at all. A lot of the magic does happen in the custom CSS. I will put a copy of this, let me just get rid of that and widen this inside of the video description so you can go away and play around with it. Um, so this is where it's applying particular styles to the all, to the parent, uh, to the child as well. And what's important is this knows what is a parent or a child based on the data filter starting with parent, which is why when it comes to the slugs uh, for your parent and your child categories, you've got to have parent hyphen, child hyphen, okay? Because it knows what to pick up. This is where it's adding in the chevron for if there is a child, uh, and then there's a bit of styling over here for the child as well. You can see the colors I'm applying. And then down here, when you click on an item, I had a yellow color appear, and I'm only applying that to the child. I'm not applying that to the all or the parent, but I've left this in here empty, so you can see the curly brackets there. So if you wanna drop in a different background color, so when you click on the parent, it will stay this color and this size and background color, you know, all of that. If you want to change it, when you click it, you can go and add in a bit of styling over here. So maybe you all of a sudden want to make the border radius. Sorry, you want the border to have a bit of a radius applied to it. You could do that. In fact, should we drop that in? So I've gone and added that in. So now hopefully when you click on any of these, there will be a border radius. That handles a lot of the styling. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I should mention the taxonomy filter is currently set to be vertical as well. That's probably quite important. Normally it's horizontal. And I've also left the line it, otherwise it will start to look like that. So a lot of the visualization you can do out the box, but by using the CSS down here, you get a whole load more styling options. I do not recommend, you can use the typography to set your typography sizes. You can do that, okay? but I do not recommend you set any colors or anything in here for the hover or active. Do it inside of the CSS. In fact, I've also, for the child, you can see here, I've said font size 14.5 and I've put important in there to force it through because having so much more control here allows you to have a much more bespoke look. If you use the elemental styling options, it applies it to everything, the all, the parent, the child, and then you're gonna have loads of importance scattered around everywhere. So this keeps it a whole lot more cleaner. And then obviously we have the HTML widget and you don't have to do anything to do this, all right? You just take the code and paste it in. If you have followed the logic I've explained to you with regards to parent hyphen, child hyphen, as long as you do that, this knows what to pick up. We've got our loop grid, we've got our first item all, which now looks like this, and the styling was all done within that CSS for the taxonomy filter. We've got bike. And when I click it, notice how the styling changed, the border radius now kicked in. You don't have to do that, but you can do if you want. And we only see the bike and there's no children. Let's just uh, you click it again to undo it or just click reset filters. It's gonna take you back to square one. Let's go to transmission, let's go to manual. There you go. I don't have to expand on the color or the brand unless I want to. So I suddenly go, hey, you know what? Let's go to brand and let's go for BMW. And it's only gonna show me one post because it meets all of that criteria. Whereas if you had multiple taxonomy filters, you could click BMW for one, you could click manual for other, but you're gonna see, it, it just doesn't work. You're just gonna see like loads more posts than you actually should do. And it just doesn't filter properly. But by thinking out the box, with parent and child categories and make sure you assign them correctly within each post or product. Don't forget, you could use this for products. You know, unless you wanna see color widgets and stuff like that, where you actually wanna see them, then you gotta do a bit more funky styling and whatever. 
you could apply this technically to basically anything where you're not overly focused or fussed about having too many custom taxonomies. And of course, I will be experimenting with this to try and take it further. Look, don't forget, hit reset filters and it's going to basically just take it all back to how it was. Yeah, the filters are still open. Um, if anyone wants to look at the code and expand on it, make it better, make it more web accessible, go for it. This is just a dummy tutorial, right? This is not a real website, so I'm not overly focused about ticking every single box. But you can take something that I've now given you as a foundation to build upon. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I love creating tutorials and helping you and your businesses out. I hope you smash the like button. I hope you share and let other people know about this. And I hope you are now subscribing or hopefully you're already subscribed. But I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time for the pain. Let the grind, I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that fact, taking big swings.